the biggest thing that you could do to make your S10 faster if you have a small block Chevy in it, for sure of all the things I bought on this, and it was not cheap, has made the biggest difference in ET, and it hasn't even been this engine or that torque storm, it is those headers. These headers are from Lemons. These Lemons are one and three quarter step to one and seven eight. They've got a three inch merge collector. When it was with the 355 and I just switched the headers, it went from a 1114 to that 1086. Um, and that was also taken off the exhaust. So those headers, uh, by far, of all the drop in ET, the, the headers have been the biggest ET jump, period. <laughs> Hey guys, this is Eric Weingartner with Weingartner Racing. If you watched any of my other videos, you heard me complain so much about the headers. I hated the headers. Those headers. These are the new ones. Now, there is a whole bunch of stuff. I'm gonna to try to give you a little bit of tech in this so you can get some appreciation for it, or at least some help. What I've done is I switched headers. Now these are, let's, let's talk about which one was on at first and we'll talk about what these are because there's a huge difference. So these are the headers that came off of it. They are one and three quarters headers and they've got a three inch flange here. But if you look at the gasket, this is the driver's side, which by the way, this is the one that houses the O2 sensor. You can kind of see what's going on. I did not think it was leaking here, but there was a little bit of clue that some gases were getting there because if I pulled off my valve cover gasket, which are the Moroso Permatork Blue, I highly recommend that valve cover gasket. They don't leak. It was like it looked like it was getting hot and turning uh, yellowish, and I figured it's because I wrapped them and they're hotter here. Well, evidently there must have been some leak through here, but the biggest one was right here. You see that? That's a better shot of it. That's where it was coming, which is all the way at the back near the firewall. Which, by the way, if you look at it, you're not that far from the collector. So I kept thinking the collector was leaking, which this one wasn't, but the other one for sure was. But it was right here. I'm like, well, why didn't you try tightening this? Oh, I hate these headers. That's the head bolt, the head, header bolt right here. That's, I don't know if you can see it in there. There's your bolt. You can't get a socket in it. And I'm like, well, you wrapped it. No, it's like almost impossible. Especially when the steering arm's on. So you gotta take the steering arm off just to put it on. Horrible. Not like to mention, if you look, now these are shorty headers. But if you look at it, these headers, tubes here, aren't so bad. But that one's super short, like three inches maybe. All right? Horrible. This is the passenger one. As you can tell from its gasket, it looks like it's leaking through the center a little bit. And the end one, but not bad. The back one's perfect, which is weird. The collector on that, though, is screwed. That one was for sure leaking. I don't have the gasket handy here to show you, but... That collector was probably making the most noise for all closely by that deal. So that's those. I did not dine on the engine with these headers. So I could tell you for sure, I think they lost quite a bit of horsepower and especially torque, especially because of the smaller tube or short tubes with those headers. So, and the reason why you might say, why did you ever get them? Because I wanted to run a full size tire. This is the front tires that were on it. In case you're wondering what size I ran, I can find it on here. This is a 215 70 15. Okay. The thought was, I'm going to run um, the EFI, and if I run EFI, there's a chance if any exhaust leak will make the O2s read wrong, and then that could mess up the correction that um, Holly puts in it. So I was hoping these would fix that because the new headers, they have to slide into a collector. So I was afraid of the leak. So I thought these would be better. In the end, these end up leaking probably worse. Anyway, that's those headers. Let's talk about these ones. These are from Lemons. Lemons headers. These are not at all cheap. The only other headers I know that they make for these are the Headman ones. And TPV has a video of him installing the um, Headman Hustler ones and their Fender X and they will be exiting right here. I wanted these one because I didn't want my collector right there. Okay, these are actually longer tubes than the Headman's too. I'd say the Headman's more mid-length. These are definitely long tubes. And the collector actually ends underneath, inside the frame. You can see how the tubes wrap around the frame and then they exit there. Now they're not tightened up. I just wanna see where I have to remove stuff to see if I have to get anything out of the way for these to clear. And for the most part, they clear. I have to move the brake bracket, brake line bracket, and I've got a firewall right 
here. It's just barely touching. And I mean just barely. It's probably not touching, but I'm gonna pound a little anyway. And then also, and I don't know that this is their fault, but I gotta switch the bolt around on this lower control arm, which you can't see. Um, put the nut in on the other side, not on this side, and then pound the tab in just a little, just, it's maybe a 30 seconds of an inch. It's not really touching, but it's pretty close. So anyway, that's gotta be done. The headers themselves are a little different, and I'll tell you why I chose this. Uh, lemons can make whatever you want. In case you're wondering how much you spend on these headers, $2,300, and they're mild steel. You're like, oh my God. I would agree, but you'll see why they cost so much here in a second. They'll make whatever size you want, up to two and a quarter. The header size I have here are one and three quarter, and then it steps to one and seven eighths. And these are a long tube. The reason for this header tube size is because I've done on very se several engines, including this one, with this size. So when I had this on the engine dyno, I had um, the dyno headers, which the dyno headers they had were one and seven eighths step to two inch with a three and a half inch collector. And that's the one that made its best peak power on. However, I'd also brought another set from Schoenfield. They were one and three quarter step to one and seven eighths, almost the same length as these except for with the merge collector, which is the reason why these cost so much. Um, and it was, I wanna say three horsepower down, but it gained 12 foot pounds of torque between, I wanna say um, 4,052. After that, it pretty much matched the, other, the bigger header tubes. In other words, even though they're smaller, they do better. Then, so like the bigger headers did make more power, at peak but these ones really did better overall the other reason is i know this engine is not staying in here the 406 is being built that one's going to use these same headers and you're like wow then it seems small for those i mean if it's okay for this 355 wouldn't it be small for those in engine master testing i tested several headers one and three quarter one and three quarter step to one and seven eighths and a one and seven eighths the one and seven eighths was the best with a regular collector which is a straight collector when I add the merge collector, which I'll show you in a second, the um, one and three quarter step to one and seven eighths was better everywhere and not by much. We're talking like two or three horsepower, okay? Now, what is a merge collector? That's this. This is a merge collector. And these are the reasons really the headers cost so much. If I hadn't got these, the headers would have cost, I think it was 1774, still very expensive. Here's what a merge collector is. So it looks kind of normal on the outside and I'll set it down so you can kind of see. Your typical collector kind of necks down here, then you've got a straight that comes out and you can have different sizes, you know, and this one was gonna be three and a half, but I wanted a merge collector. What it does is it tapers down right here and the, this is called the choke point and it's two and three eighths and then it flares out to three inch. Now, they have different types, different merge collectors where this choke point can be bigger or smaller. It looks weird here. You're like, oh my gosh, you put a restriction in it. I don't have a perfect reason for this. Um, and I know if you look at it, you're like, it looks like a restriction. And I, I don't have the exact answer for you for why it works. I just know every time I've tested it, it's in, it picks up, especially in the mid range and rarely loses more than two horsepower peak. And sometimes, and matter of fact, oftentimes it does better even on peak power than a straight collector. But here's the thing. Don't think this, I'm saying this is that's yeah, guaranteed. It's going to make the difference. Headers and exhaust systems are so application dependent. You can take these same headers and what you probably could make a bigger influence by it because these are removable is putting extensions onto the tube itself and keep moving the tubes out longer and longer or shorter or shorten them to see where you make the best power. That's probably more important than even the merge collector. Okay. Now here's something else about the merge collector. It's on the inside. It doesn't look that different, but there's a cone spike right in the center. It centers the exhaust flow right at that merge and then it flares out. Anyway, that's what these are. So if you wanted to save some money and you didn't want to buy these, um, you could do with a straight one. 
these are, as you could tell, interchangeable. So I can change them out and put a different one on the test. But I really think this one, especially because I'm gonna make it more of a street truck, but still goes to this track, I think this is gonna be better. I can't begin to tell you how happy I am just that it won't it will seal up because I'm gonna have a slip joint that goes over the top of this and a band clamp that holds it on. Um, it's one of those stainless clamp ones. And then it will never leak. And somewhere in here, I have to put an O2. I'll probably actually put it out here on the extension. But anyway, that's the reason why the headers are so expensive. Now, the headers are not finished. And you might say, why aren't they done? Well, here's the downside. I'll go ahead and tell you. you can't, I can't run my regular tire. I have to go to a skinny. Now, this is the size one from, there it is, 26, 7 and a half, 15. And if I look, I've disconnected my steering arm, so I'm gonna turn my wheel. Steering box is looking a little rough. That gives you some clearance there. And there's about how much it's turned. So pretty good amount. But I will say this, I've got longer studs on the front of this tire, so I can bring it out. I'm more likely because the wheel's smaller, it's gonna look dumb, because it's probably gonna be further inside the wheel well. I'm probably gonna split a spacer to move it out. And then when I get to the track, I'll just take it off. Because I don't feel comfortable running a spacer on a tire at the racetrack. Around town, no big deal. Now, have you had any other problems with this? No, honestly, these went in pretty easy. They're all individual. These two tubes are together. And the way you do it is you put in the back tube first, and then, am I right? Put in this tube next, and this two, these two last. And these really have been simple. It was the passenger side that's been kind of a, you could tell it's not here. And the reason why is, the starter and everything else. This one was fine, these two were fine. This one was made wrong and it was actually not even close to touching here. Like it would hit here. But anyway, Lemon's super great. They said, send it back and we'll get you taken care of. So I'm waiting for that to come back because right now the headers are just mild steel. I'm gonna go get them coated and then I'm gonna wrap them. And you might say, why are you doing both? Well, this is why. The next engine will have the, of course the, it's not, it's gonna have the Torx Storm Supercharger and that's gonna be right here. I don't want header heat being sucked in because it's already probably gonna get it anyway. But just reduce the amount of heat being sucked in. These dudes are getting wrapped. And by the way, I cannot tell you how happy I'm about, ah, spark plug, I can get to them easier. This is so much better. Of course, the steering arm's out of the way, but huh, that's a lifesaver. Anyway, this is what's happening with the truck. Hopefully I can get this all put back together sometime relatively soon. And I know some of you right now, you spent $2,300 for headers. It better go like a 1080. I would agree with you. I just did not want to deal with the old headers anymore. I had my limit. Those Headman ones are like 600 bucks and probably do, I don't know, to be as good as this or look as sharp as having the tubes tucked in and everything. I rambled, but I wanted to give you information about this in case you've got an S10 and you got a small block and you're like, I don't really want my collector there. I want my exhaust to be in the center because that's part of it too. I do not want exhaust running through the side or a tube down there. These are only, you know, one and seven eighths underneath. There's plenty of clearance. Um, if you're thinking of it, I just want to give you an idea. Lemons does make great headers for an S10.